So the RLN is the, the topic for today and for two handle the time series data set. I think last time uh, uh, I mentioned several times that the, the sequence information or the, the time information is in many, in, in many applications it's, it's, uh, it's knowing that the time information is important and in order to handle that kind of things is, is uh, like ANN and CNN is not a proper way. So that's why we, we come up with the recurrent neural net. And let me see, suppose we have this kind of say data and say we have, I don't know, say like 100 data points and probably it will be like this, some 100 data points Suppose this is the observations or measurement. Based on that, the raw data set, so like we do classifications, but we mentioned the, the idea of here Markov model is that, so instead of these models, we believe that there is some latent space between them. So in hidden state, so it will be the latent space or hidden space, which is the, this, the state representation can, can have, have more like compressed information. So, and the classification is probably it will be more reasonable that we do classifications instead of doing classifications based on based on the raw data set, probably based on the state. But in this case, it will be hidden state. That's the kind of idea or the assumption that we made for, for hidden Markov model. But still like here, we do like that. But in many cases in the physical system or dynamic systems, we do have some kind of the, 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 the sequence behaviors. So for that, to, in order to deal with that, so that's the, the, the snapshot information. So probably like we have some dynamics between the, the time sequence. So Instead of having like that, no, we do have, we assume that there is some kind of dynamics over the hidden state, not over the, the outputs or observations or the inputs. So there will be the finer structure for the recurrent neural net. Does it make sense? And for the karma filters, we assume that we know the state, we assume that we know the relations between the states, like like, like that. But in, in the framework or work of deep learnings, we, the only thing is we, this is the, something that we know, it's if that's a supervised learnings and we are asking, we are hoping that deep learning models is able to learn the hidden state and the relationship at the same time or simultaneously. That's the idea of, that's probably the philosophy of uh, recurrent neural net. And the recurrence is uh, like, let me see. Mm. Hidden state representations and learn from learn from the let me see from the sequential data set. And now I'm gonna change some kind of rep graphical representations here. Say this one is like are we, like A N N. We have inputs and the first hidden layers. 
and second and probably it's gonna be the outputs okay so we have many neurons in the inputs and layers the first hidden layers and second hidden layers and for the output layers now i mean this is the an and we we, we i think we did we study a lot and we did many homework assignment now just i want to simplify that to say just looking at these directions so like that so instead of using the circles now use square which means by looking at this this is not a single neuron actually it's like we have many neurons inside okay that's the kind of the simpler way of representing it because okay so let's see and input is now a specter each layer has many neurons it's over here we have many neurons many neurons and many neurons just to, to, to simplify that and now if i add another sequence of inputs probably like since we are looking over there like that and if we add more hidden layers in the previous sequence probably like this now by looking at this these figures now you have to see like that okay you have to imagine or visualize in 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 in, in somehow now you have time index and this one is uh, sliding predictors as you can see from the name say you have some sequence of this one is actually like like this kind of the structures right but i want to simplify that like this now suppose you uh make say it's, it's a hidden layers and another hidden layers and upper layers to 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 predict in that case you are looking at or the input sequence is feeding to the first hidden layers like like this okay so looking at a few few a few less a few i mean sequence This is just conventional neural net applied to the sequential data set. Now, in order to predict at the output values at time is equal to t plus four, you basically you sliding it and taking four last the sequence like that. So using this kind of those, the, the, the structures in order to make some kind of decisions or predictions at this time, we, the, this, this kind of neural net is looking at the data at, at, at t plus two, t plus three, t plus four, t plus five, right? That's the time windows. I mean, if you, believe that is just the length of the time window is if this is not long enough probably you have to you have to the, the increase that right so so n is the width of the systems and this is the finite response models it's finite the problem is what if we want to increase the history that makes the neural net more comp uh, to, to predict the outputs? Probably, I'm not sure like whether it's five is good enough or six or seven, eight. So that, that would be the basically the, some kind of the, the mathematical expression for this kind of neurons. So in order to predict at time t equals at time t, so this is the time index. Right. Say so suppose I I want to I want to I want to 
take it history as like 100 data points or time sequence, then as you can see, your, your model is going to be like that. In theory, we, we can increase it in, in infinite memories, but in, in practice or in, in real world, it's almost impossible. Okay. And as you can see, if you so at, at here, if that's the, the input is far away from like possibly the, the, rela the relationship between them is like getting weaker and weaker, have, have some weaker influence to the, to at the something and at time t is time at time t is equal to t. Yeah. And another thing is, is memory. So in, 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 in computers to, to store some kind of memories, we need physical memories, right? Stories, but in that, in this, in this kind of things, we have to have infinite stories or memory space, which is not inefficient. So for infinite response systems, in theory, this is possible, but in practice, it's impossible. So the idea is that here we have inputs and with some kind of functions to predict the outputs in sequence. But what if, what if we just take inputs at time t and the previous output using that some, this function might be different. Like one, two. So it's a, it's a, it's a recursive, it's a recursive. So to, 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 to predict the alpha values at time is equal to t, we are looking at the output at the previous time index and the current input observations or the measurement. So, I mean, this is the idea of the Kalman filters and whatever, okay? And again, the idea is it's a recursive. And let me see, and T minus one is, say just F. And over there in, in at T minus one, we have T minus one and input and output information. So it's recursive, but in theory, it's the output contains the information about the entire past entire history. Okay. And how many memories do we need here? Here we need infinite memories, memory space. Over here, we need like two memories. Why memories? Because we need one memory for the inputs and another memory for the Y. And each time we're gonna, we had, we, we got this and next time with this, we're gonna update it to T, right? We're gonna read the values and using the, some, do some kind of complete uh, uh, calculations and update it. So we do not need infinite memory space in this case, having recursive, we don't need that many that much space. So we call it this is a uh, regressive, but it's because it's uh, we using the previous Y to predict Y is it's auto regress regressive models. So it's like that. So we from X and the previous Y, we, we this guy is taking these two informations and do some the nonlinear many uh, mappings to estimate it and things like that. So this is going to be the animations. Okay. So auto regressive neural net with recursion from the outputs, recursion from the previous outputs to compute new output. That's the idea of auto regressions.
right? That's complete representations. Another way of, or alternate models for infinite response is that thinking about the state. So in, in, the, in the previous one was that yt is some kind of f, say it's h, fst, and yt minus one, right? Now, from the idea of the hidden Markov models and the Kalman filters, we can define the state. So we call it state space representations. The X is input and Y is the output, and we believe that some, there is some hidden state. Right? So H is the hidden state. This is the so state summarize the information of entire past. So the only thing is that over there in the previous one, from the previous outputs and taking it these two, but now we don't need to take it, take the, inform, new, uh, the, the historical information from the historical outputs. We, instead of that, we are doing this. So, X inputs and the previous state and do the outputs. So this is a single hidden layers recurrent neural net, which is, I think is the simplest state space represent, state space model. Okay. And uh, if we need maybe two hidden layers, probably just add another like that. And the folded version of it, so let me, this one looks like you need infinite, like many states and many networks and many connections between, but actually it's not because, see in, in, in the computer, when you implement or realize it, again, you, you stored in, say you stored at time T in hidden values, and you will, you get some memories for the, to store the current measurement or observations and using that and compute the outputs. And for the next t plus one, you need the previous the data of h of t and this is recursions. That's why it's, it's, a, it's a recurrent, recurrent, recurrent neural net. So actually looks you, this is the truth, like things happening over time, but actually when you implement it, this is the only thing that you need. This is the only thing that you need. So you can think of it as a folded version of RNN things. And if you add another hidden layers, that's the only thing that you need to modify or change or update. So finally, the RNN is like this kind of structures. It's a simplified models often drawn like this. And the loop imply the recurrence. So that's why its name is recurrent neural net. And RNN has a lot of the machine translations and speech recognitions and text to speech, image captioning, videos, and things like those are the current applications. And let me see, this one is like, I mean, let me, let me show you this one. A lot of different, and this is one to one and one to many, and we have many to one and many to many, and many to many applications. Uh, I mean, one of the, over there, for one too many structures, you have, this is the input sequence and these are the output sequence. From, say, for image captioning means, if you're just showing the image and you, you, your task is you have to generate some kind of the, the, the sequence of words to explain it. So it's like captioning things. And the single image, you have to create some kind of sequence. So it's a one too many categories. And another one is many to one. I mean, classifications, things like that. 
you 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 heard like some kind of set you read or some kind of sentence and you, your task is you have to decide or determine what what kind of the emotion that the author has that kind of things it could be the one of the example of many to one case many to many is like motion translations sequence of word and you have to generate maybe like this one is the sequence of Korean language and this one is like sequence of English things like that so it's more related to machine translations another example of many to many oh this one is the structures are different and things this one is like uh, I'm not going to in details but this is like like encoder and decoder things structures and that one is video classifications on frame each frames so if you have the videos you can think of as a sequence of frame or sequence of image Things like that. So the rnn is let me see you have sequence of the inputs over time and hidden state and you predict the outputs and for the next time you have taking the previous hidden state and the current x and you, you you do some kind of outputs like that that's how the recurrence work and the simplified recurrent connections and you can think of as let me, let me see this one I mean the, to update it I need in the previous hidden state and the x so yes this is the you can think of as a matrix and another matrix and things like that and this will be to I need previous the hidden space and the inputs to some kind of nonlinear functions to 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 update it the current hidden hidden state and using the current hidden state and some kind of mappings with the nonlinear activation functions, there's the it's gonna be the outputs. Okay, so A is gonna be like, I mean here you can add some bias, it, it, and this is one of the nonlinear activation functions. You can use the other one; it's okay. And for 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 over there is another. The bias or constant, and the output is you use another like softmax or sigmoid as a nonlinear activation functions. There will be the one of the examples over there. How to train neural net? Again, we're using the back propagations in the backward. So basically, the idea is that you can think of as this one is. ANS structures, right? Because yeah, this this is the ANS structure that we learn it, and because we have time index, there's another ANS structures and things like that. And if you see that, so again, we're going to use a back propagations. And if you think about the sequence, so this one is the, like over there and doing that and doing that and to that like this. So we, we do back propagations again in that directions and on that directions. So we do back propagation through time. So that's the how we, I mean, we just do over there like this kind of gradient descent. I mean, the gradient uh, calculations. But over here, how do you compute the back, pro back, back propagations and, 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 and in, in in RNA structures and you don't need to know. You don't need to know. So the calculations and optimizations, so again, I, I said, I repeat many times or emphasize it, the TensorFlow is gonna, gonna take care of it. So we don't need to know uh, how do you do that kind of calculations in detail. But there's some, so remember this name for the, the sequential data set for RNN kind of thing structures, we do back propagation through time. That's 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 for the RNN structures. And another, I think you 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 many of you heard of it, the LSTM 
is long short term memories. Let me see. And the motivation is that it's a gradient propagations over many space tends to either vanish or explode because let me go back to here. This one is, this is ANS structures. You know that it's, it's uh, we do a lot of the, the chain rules and back propagations. We do a lot of multiplication with the very small numbers because in sigmoid functions, if you take the gradient the values, it's very small, like zero, between zero to one. So we do a lot of multiplications in that way. So that's the, so we need to, for the vanishing problem is the big issues. So that's why we come up with these kind of functions. But uh, even though we have LALU, the learning age for functions, if we have the, the sequence with the long, like the windows over there, we do in that directions. So that means we, we do a lot of, the vanishing problem is getting worse. So that's why in many cases, if you say this is the time, and let me see, let me see, it's a typical with the long-term dependency. So it looks like it's gonna like exponentially gonna have a smaller weight if given to long-term interactions. That's the, so that's why it's, uh, RNN is has a very difficult to train. It's extremely difficult to train. Right, because the network is, is pretty heavy compared to like CNN or even ANN. Because we, we have we add another axis which is time. That's why someone is brilliant. The researchers is uh, that came up with another like a similar for to to handle the time sequence data set is LSTM. So the idea is that as is looking at this kind of figures say this one is this one is, is almost white so that means there is no influence very very extremely weak interactions or connections so the example of that is for the speech say this is the say i say i grew up in france and i want to know what kind of the language that i that i speak then over there is the, in, in, see, in, in between them say there's a lot of the unrelated the sentence, but in order to figure out the French, it's, it's say this is far away from that, but it, then it's, it's extremely difficult to pick up. So it says like, say you have France over here and over there is, is a French. And if this is a far away, then there is almost no way that this has some kind of connections to this network. So the idea is that instead of is we have the memory cells and set of gating units. Okay, so I mean, this one is, I mean, you don't have to fully understand and just because at the end, we're going to use the, there's a, the functions or method for the LSTM. So it's, there's no problem of using that LSTMs, but at least I think I, I have to introduce what's the, 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 the concept of LSTM. That's why I'm trying to explain it here. And let me see, there's so many, like we have forgetting gate and writing gate and read. So what, what I'm saying is that, suppose this one is the, the gate. We can open the gate and we can close the gate. And say this is, uh, Wait, I don't. This one is zeros, and this one is one. Or you can think as a, you can use a sigmoid to 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 control the gate. Say if that's open, your information is coming and it's, it's blocked. 
or closed, so there's we, the information cannot pass in the, the blocked gate. But this one is open, so we go there, and this one is open, so we go there, open it, and open it, so the information flows, right, based on whether the gate, the memory cell, or the, I mean, the gate is whether it's, it's open or closed. And open it, and open it, and open it, and close. So with this kind of structures, the in in training process, we 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 trying to figure it out all the parameters related to the whether it's each gate, whether we're gonna close it and open it. That's the idea of the LSTM structure. So that's something that. It's happening inside LSTM cell, and which is you don't we don't have to know. I mean, this is somewhat complicated. Yeah. And let me think about the gate. Suppose we have that kind of values, and there's another vectors. If we do this kind of notations, you just you can assume that this element wise additions element by element and we do we, we, we do the kind of and for on the other hand is for the multiplications if we do this kind of the notations or operations we do we can compute it like that element wise multiplications I think there's no problem and the idea is that say this is the signal I'm 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 trying to trying to discuss gating and suppose I have the gate and probably the each element the value from like 0 to 1. So this is 0 and this one is 1 and somehow so say, let's suppose that we have like values from 0, 0 0.5. If you do this but element wise multiplications gating or operations we can compute it like that and this is the will be the outputs and just looking at this we have input signals and this is the output signals and this the first element it's on the gate is open and the last one it's closed so the information is blocked and this guy is only half of them okay so we this is the you can think of think of as a as a as a like control valve. Right? It's like the 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 tap on 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 your. Right? So, whether you set this gating close to zeros, then then the information is gonna block and close to one. It's it's wide open, so it's it's uh, it's kind of. The freeway or highway so that the information can pass to the downstreams or next state. So this one will be unknown or the parameters. There is that we need to train or learn. Learn. You see the ideas, and this one is like like part of LSTM cell. Part of this one, I will, I will skip that. This I will skip that. You don't need to know. But again, it's, uh, the weakness of RNN and LSTM is that it's a sequential computation is is extremely slow, and even though we 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 come up with the LSTM ideas, still like vanishing or exploding gradient is still probable problematics. Right? It's still like there's a lot of issues, so it's extremely difficult to get the good result. In so when you when you when you like, if you have chance, if you have chance to deal with the sequential data set, the first thing is that, okay, think about the RNN or LSTM structures. I'm gonna show you some of the examples, but please remember that it's difficult to train. 
So there's a lot of drawbacks or weakness. So I want to implement the LSTM structures. So let's see, I'm going to take this kind of, this kind of sequential data set. And we need to take the windows. Say this is 100 data points. And these are the hidden state. And remember, there's no this kind of networks. Only thing is that just among between the hidden states. And at the end, we, from here, we believe that all the previous information is, 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 and the current values are accumulated over there, which is probably you can think of or consider as the condensed information over there. And based on this, like condensed features, you do something to do like classifications and regression, whatever. And that's kind of nice and fancy visualizations. Suppose we have this kind of structures and we have time windows, windows, and put it in one of the LSTM cells. And LSTM cell has like, like that kind of sequence. And at the end, you do have some kind of fully connected layers. And, and if that's the binary classifications, you add the class, class like classifiers that's the, for classification problem for predictions and say the idea is that if you have this kind of the sequence and the training data set say you have like I, I, let me see like i don't know like 2,500 data points, I'm using that to predict next 100 data points. Okay, so say this is the, your entire training data set in, the, in, the, in, in time series data set. And I'm using this one as an input, and this will be the output for the predictions. And next time I'm using that one to, to predict. And like this will be, and that's why, as you can see, put it over there. And then you have, over there you have, say it's, it's 100 data points, predicting one, you do regressions. So that's why it's prediction and the regression is are pretty much the same here in, 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 in the sequential data set. So having historical data set to, to LSTM structures and with the hidden layers and with this, the known outputs over there, we do, we're trying to as close as possible. So it's, 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 a, it's predictions, but it's a regressions. So I'm, let me see. Okay. So the example of this one is predicting the next piece of acceleration data set. Actually, this is the actual, the, the vibration signals that I collected from some kind of mechanical component or systems. And this is like the vibration things. I want to estimate it, what's going to happen next. So this is the structures. So over there, the input, this one is 100 data points. And LSTM, we have 100 data points and 100 data points. And we have 55 of them. So in, 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 in here, the input sequence is like, we have 25, each of them is 100, so it's 20. 500 data points as an input. And I want to predict over there 
another 100 data points. It's prediction problems and the regression. So this one, now I have two hidden layers as a LSTM cells, okay? And this is LSTM1 and LSTM2. And how do you implement it? Let me see. Now over there, it's a hidden layers. And we have upper layers. And one thing that you guys should notice is we don't, we don't have to define weights and bias for the LSTM. We don't have to define it. We don't need to define the weights and bias for of the LSTM cells, which is probably for the for us it's it's, it's most easier and convenient. And this is how you you implement LSTM. And let me see. Here we have LSTM1 using like LSTM cells. And here is we have 100 data points for the LSTM1 and run it LSTM1 and X, which is the input. So this is X and another LSTM. So the, the second LSTM is the input is gonna be, let me see, now over there is this over there is H1, so it's it's over there. And these are the output output is uh is another fully connected layers. I mean again, it's just I I want you guys to like probably like after this class or we're doing the homework, probably just this will be the good example of how, you, how to learn how to implement the LSTM structures with the sequential data set. Right? I, I think it's, it's, it's not that difficult to, to understand. So loss functions is same as regression problems. That's why we have subtract and squared and the batch process is to reduce means and using like atom optimizer, whatever you, you, you prefer. And this one is the predicted. This one is the predicted one. And with this kind of structures, only thing is you can predict, like you use, you can predict another next 100 data points but what if I want to predict more? What's the idea? So based on these data, I was I was able to predict this the red things. And how do you predict another one? So the idea is that now I got another data points, of course, at, over there is it's a predictive one, but I can use the predictive one to create another sequence as an input. And based on that, I can predict. So as you can see, this one is, so this is the information, the sequence that I is given. And this one is predictive one. And this one is based on these predictive values, I predict another one and another one. So as you can see, as the the predictive one is if the far away from this is, is get the accuracy or is, is getting worse. Right. 